Hi, I'm Brian here with Aaliyah at SkyZone, a worker at SkyZone. How are you doing today, Aaliyah? I'm doing good. That's good. Um, so what are your job responsibilities here at SkyZone? Um, I'm cashier and greeter, and I do concessions sometimes. Cool. Uh, so what made you want to apply here at SkyZone? Uh, I quit my job at Bob Evans, and I just need a new job. Uh, do you like working here at SkyZone? Yeah, I love it. It's the best job ever. Um, how has it affected your social life? Have you met any new friends? Yeah, I met a lot of new friends, and I mostly take up a lot of my time being here, so I don't hang out with my friends as much anymore, but it's good. Cool. Um, have you uh, taken any, did you take any classes in high school or college that maybe like want, affected you wanting to work here? No, not really. <laughs> okay, I'm Brian here with Aaliyah at SkyZone. Thanks for your time. Hi, I'm Brian here with Justin at SkyZone. How are you doing today, Justin? Good, man. Thanks. Um, so what are your job responsibilities here at SkyZone? Uh, I'm the general manager, so basically responsible for everything um, from building maintenance to employee, you know, staffs, employees, cleanliness, uh, pretty much everything um, behind the scenes and uh, all the things you see here. Cool. Um, so how did you get involved in this business? Why did you want to become a manager um, at SkyZone? Yeah, so I have a degree in recreation. Um, from Slippery Rock and uh, about 10 years ago I uh, got into that so just I wanted to be part of something in Pittsburgh that was new exciting fun healthy um, and it kind of meets all that criteria so yeah I got into about three years ago over in Leedsdale and now I'm here in Monroeville opening up this park. Cool. Uh, so when you heard SkyZone was opening what are you most excited about? Um, I'm just excited about the energy that brings and people are excited to have something in the community that's a place to go especially this time of year it's cloudy, snowy, cold outside, not much to do. So it gives everybody, you know, an outlet, um, a way to stay healthy and, you know, burn some calories and just have a whole lot of fun doing it. So. All right. Um, so can you explain the different trampoline areas we got going on here? Yeah. So we have a variety of courts. We have our foam zone court. Um, so big old foam pit, uh, jump in, land in a, you know, soft area, practice some tricks, that kind of thing. Um, we have three dodgeball courts that we separate by age. Um, so, you know, a variety of ages can play dodgeball. Um, we have our main court, uh, which is for open jumping. So you got trampolines on the floor, trampolines on the wall, you know, just doing kind of your open jump. And then lastly, our Sky Slam basketball. So there's three hoops here um, in Monroeville. So we were able to you know, practice your dunks and just feel like uh, LeBron James out there at times. So. Sounds like fun. Um, so do some people come here just strictly for exercise? And do you have any exercise classes going on here? Yeah, absolutely. So we are going to get our, uh, our exercise class is called Skyrobics. We're going to get that rolling here in the next couple of weeks, just uh, hired an instructor. So yeah, people do come strictly for the exercise. We call it exercise in disguise. The folks that are here right now having birthday parties, just jumping. They're getting a workout and they're just jumping, having a good time. Um, but then we do have the, the actual exercise classes. You can burn up to 1,000 calories. Um, in an hour, um, you know, just a low impact, kind of a very unique workout. Um, it's pretty cool and it kicks your butt, so it's, it's a good time. Um, can you explain to us how you maintain the trampolines here? Yeah, so there's a, there's a pretty heavy maintenance program. Um, you know, we, we clean and disinfect them every night. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, the topical, just keeping them clean, that kind of thing. But then there's a lot of maintenance goes underneath. Um, with uh, with biweekly checks of springs and, and all the turnbuckles and all the things that are underneath. Um, so we have a couple of dedicated folks that look into that, um, just keeping everything, just looking for any problem signs, that kind of thing. Uh, but it's actually a really well-designed, um, you know, building and, and on all the trampolines that um, there is maintenance, but it's, it's pretty low for the most part. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, keeping an eye on things and, and doing checks and, yeah. All right, I'm Brian here with Justin at SkyZone. Thanks for your time.
Hi, I'm Maddie Beer Temple here at the Plumborough Library with Suzanne, a clerk who works here. And we're here to ask a little bit about why the Plumborough Library is an integral part of the community. So how long has the library been open for? This building has been here since 2002. Before that, there was a smaller building on Unity Center Road. And before that, we were a a stop on the on the book stop, the bookmobile for the Carnegie Libraries, but a group of citizens got together and decided that Plum needed its own library. And so we've been working toward that ever since and we have this beautiful building now. All right, and when and why did you start working here? Well, I like to read a lot. I very much like to read and I like books and I enjoy meeting the community here. It's a very nice place to be. It's a great place for everybody to really come together. Um, now, what programs do you offer for the community? We offer a lot of programs for adults and children. Miss Liz does all the children's programs and she has programs for children of all ages at various times during the week. For adults, we have continuous programs of Circle of Stitchers, that's a group of ladies who knit, crochet, quilt, and so forth. They get together twice a month. And we also have Mahjong once a month. We have Scrabble once a month. We have the, a life writer group where people are learning to write their life stories and that meets every Friday. We've also begun a new coloring for adult program. You know, coloring for adults is the, a new fad, a new thing going on. And so every Monday we have a group here who can come here and we provide coloring pages and we provide crayons, colored pencils, Sharpies, and whatever they might like. In addition to those weekly programs or monthly programs, we also have special programs throughout the year. Sometimes we do crafts, so sometimes it's a fun program, and sometimes it's a learning program. This morning we had a computer program about using iPhones and iPads, especially as they relate to the library, and people can download material from the library onto their devices. Well, that's great. So people can come here, they can learn new things, they can um, play Scrabble, like you were saying. I remember we were talking about how when we used to come here when we were little, it was always great to have all these programs available. So what renovations or changes have been made over time? Well, since 2002, the original building was only part of the actual structure that we're in right now. And then a few years later, what is currently the children's area was all the new addition. So that was a major addition to this building. Yeah, I remember when the, the kids section used to be over here. Now it's, now it's changed. Um, so I know you talked about the session with iPads and iPhones, but how would you say technology has changed or how have you guys adapted to the rise of things like ebooks and um, like the Internet? We've helped a lot of people learn how to download ebooks onto their computers or onto their e-readers or onto their phones if they can read a book on, their, on that small of a screen. Uh, and people have adapted very well. We were just talking this morning about how many of the, the ladies, even the ladies who one might consider a little bit older, have learned how to do this and they learn it very well. So they've learned how to do this. People who are, especially people who are somewhat isolated, perhaps live in a very rural area, who don't get out, especially in the winter, are very happy to be able to download books from their home. We've also heard that a lot of people who travel like to do that. They like to be able to download onto their devices and then they don't have to be concerned about books being overdue and so forth because the ebooks disappear after three weeks. So they don't have to worry about fines. Yeah, that's, that's really convenient. It's great. It's available to a lot more people now. Um, what would you say is your favorite part about working here? Meeting all the people and talking with all the people in the community. And do you, what is your favorite book or do you have any book recommendations? Well, I like to read cozy mysteries, which are mysteries, but they're not they're not violent mysteries. They're, they're kind of nice and calm mysteries, sort of like the murder she wrote genre. Those are nice. I like to read those. We've also come across several series in which um, people, especially women, have overcome um, some obstacles in their life and addressed some issues in society. And those are very good to read, too. All right, that's great. Thank you so much for talking with us today. I'm Maddie Beer Temple, and thanks for watching.
Dan Hello, I'm Zach Noll from Plum High School here with Rich from Nesbitt's Lanes. How are you today, Rich? Good morning. I'm doing fine. Thank you. Sounds good. So, Rich, what is your position here at Nesbitt's? Uh, presently, I'm the owner of Nesbitt's Lanes. I've been here uh, full time since um, 1977, and I became um, the owner uh, as uh, my family retired and eventually they passed away. Sounds good. 1977, that's a long time. Yes, uh, 38 years. Wow. 38 years. Yeah. And what are some events that take place here at Nesbitt's? Um, we have a number of events. We have um, junior bowling leagues that take place on um, Saturday and Sunday. We have um, adult leagues that take place um, Monday through Sunday, in, usually in the evening and sometimes during the day. We um, run the um, after-school bowling program with um, the elementary schools in, um, in Plum, St. John's, Regency Center, Holiday Park, uh, Pivik. We do um, high school bowling with um, Plum, Penn Hills, and Redeemer Lutheran. So we're involved um, in many ways with uh, youth bowling and um, the community. Sounds good. And how do you feel that Nesbitt's has become such a, such a success through the community, even outside of the community? Well, uh, Plum is a great community. Uh, I was born and raised in Plum, born in um, 1954, been in Plum all my life. Uh, it's a great community. We, we just try to be a positive factor in the community, and uh, we've been rewarded by uh, the support of the community for the entire time. Thank you. And uh, I used to come uh, back in fifth grade for after school bowling and stuff, yeah. Uh, um, Center Elementary, yeah. And I know that the food's pretty good. So uh, who makes it? Uh, we actually cook it here. Uh, we get a lot of our, our products from uh, Gordon's uh, Food Service. But uh, the pizza we get uh, from, like, Fox's. And um, we have no complaints on the food. One, one of the positive things is the uh, food. Definitely no complaints for me. <laughs> what are some unique features Nesbitt has to offer? Um, well, the way the, the bowling center is set up, it was built, 1-8 um, was built in 1946 when my father and his brothers came back from the war. And then they added on eight lanes in 1959, and then they added nine and 16 on in 1960. So it's uniquely set up in a, in a different fashion. Um, basically, it's just a, an older building, and we just try to keep it uh, up to date. Nice. And lastly, what do you wish for out of Nesbitt's in the future? Um, that we can continue to um, provide a service for the community, be a positive factor in the community, and also that we can um, you know, get the support of the community. Sounds good. I wish the best of luck for you with Nesbitt's and everything. That's all the time we have today. Let's see you later.
Hi, I'm Natalie Ray here today at Home Instead Senior Care with Lisa Ray. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. So my first question is, what does Home Instead Senior Care do? We are a non-medical company and we provide in-home care for seniors. Um, that way they can stay in their homes as opposed to going to a facility. So what is your job title and what does it include? I am the director of staffing and on a daily basis um, we put caregivers into schedules with our clients um, and try to make good matches you know for the clients um, and the caregivers as well. How long have you worked here? For five years. Um, what does your average day include? So on a daily basis it's um, pretty much burning out fires if caregivers are calling off if they have um, you know conflict with their schedule for that day so um, obviously the, the clients need to have services so uh, we look for a replacement for those um, for those particular caregivers that may not be able to work that day also um, we are constantly getting in new clients um, so the goal is is to um, provide those new clients with um, a consistent schedule um, yeah so that's it so what is your favorite part about working here I would definitely 100% have to say it's um, my co-workers they make it fun and enjoyable um, and I love talking to the caregivers on the phone and getting to meet the clients um, getting out in the field as well yeah that's great so how do you find out about this job I actually um, was a stay-at-home mom for a long time with my three children, and um, I worked at the school as an aide, and I was looking for um, additional income in the summer, so I came to apply as a caregiver and um, did that for about six months, and then um, slowly, slowly transitioned into um, the office job. So what makes this job the most challenging? I would have to say um, retention, keeping the caregivers um, for you know long periods of time um, just making the you know keeping the clients happy you know as far as um, you know the consistency with the caregivers um, so that's definitely a challenge um, getting new clients in um, you know and trying to to get it all done within a certain amount of time so how much technology is involved in the job and how so I would say I mean we're constantly I'm 100% like always on the computer um, but other than that I mean you know we're on the phones a lot but definitely the computers we have the dual screen computers and um, you know that's very helpful so you know not much gets done if the computers or the system goes down all right well thank you for taking the time to talk to me today I'm Natalie Ray thank you
I'm Ashton Teeter from Plumborough High School. I'm here with Fran from Nick's Auto. How are you doing today? Good, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Um, I have a few questions for you today. First question, how did you get into this business? Uh, I actually had enjoyed working on cars ever since I was younger, and I finally got the opportunity to start pumping gas when I was in high school. So once I started pumping gas, and that's when the, my career began. Did you always want to do this? Uh, I took auto body in, in high school. Uh, did not like auto body, but when I started working on cars, I guess I really enjoyed doing that. So I continued my career, and now I'm at the business I have now. Okay, how did you learn to work on cars and fix engines? Uh, started working on cars, went to trade school, the gentleman that I used to, that I bought the shop off of, he actually sent us to night classes and trade schools, and I had a lot of on-job uh, working on site on the cars that he gave me the opportunity to do when I was younger. Uh, and that's where, that's where I'm at now. Good stuff. How how long did it take you to learn the process of fixing them? Uh. Depending on the year of the car, uh, the make of the vehicle, it, you actually it, it doesn't take it doesn't take real long. But to, to get better at it, you need to do schooling and classing and everything. So it could take years, and we continue to go for updates and the refreshing classes for the newer cars that are coming out to get better at what we do here at Nick's Auto Repair. Is this something you enjoy doing? As for working on the cars, I don't do too much of that hands-on. I'm in, in the office, uh, but I do have seven mechanics up here that work on their vehicles for me and my wife. Uh, but as for me, I'm on the business end of it, and I just do the emissions and the, like the customer support and handle all the phone calls that need to be handled up here at Nick's Auto Repair. Hey, great stuff. Thank you, friend, for everything. And Hi, I'm Mike Simboli here with Alex Zahn today from uh, Foot Locker and Minerva Mall. Alec, how you doing today? Good, thank you. It's good to hear. So, uh, what is it like working at Foot Locker? Very interesting. Uh, you meet a lot of new people. You work with a lot of different people. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it's pretty fun. Uh, how did you get into this line of work? Um, I love shoes. So, I used to work at, you know, fast food restaurants, and finally I got a chance to uh, work in somewhere I wanted to so my favorite thing shoes so why not work here that's awesome I love shoes on uh, average how many pairs of shoes you sell a day here um depends on how busy we are um I could have a I could have an eight hundred dollar day one day and then uh, another day I could have like a six thousand dollar day so it depends on how busy we are well that's crazy um here's a question uh do you want to start your own shoe selling business and if so why um, that'd be great to start one. I mean, it's very hard to because I mean you'd have to buy you know a certain pair of shoes. You'd have to you know start your own line of business. But if I had money to throw around, I definitely would start my own shoe business. Yeah, definitely. Um, and how many pair? I know you got a collection yourself of shoes. Uh, how many pairs do you have in your collection, and which is your favorite? I probably have thirty pair, thirty or so pair. And my favorite shoe I have in my collection, I would say. Um, 
I love Jordans. So all my Jordans are probably my favorite pair of shoes. I like Jordans too. Yeah. Uh, and finally, what have you learned from working at Foot Locker? You have to be very patient because you work with people who are very impatient customer wise and you always have to please the customer in order to please the customer you have to remain patient as long as you're patient and cooperate with them you should have a good day at work well Alec, thank you for your time thank you sir back to you guys I'm Ashley and I'm here today at the medicine shop with Scott. How are you today, Scott? I'm fine, thank you. And how are you? I'm great. Thanks for asking. Could you tell me a little bit about what you do here at the medicine shop? Yes, yeah, so I'm a compounding technician here at the medicine shop pharmacy. I've been here approximately 16 years. And compounding is a specialized form of pharmacy in which we make medications that aren't currently available or have been available in the past and are no longer. Um, I make a lot of medications for veterinarians, I make a lot of medications for pediatric patients, and a lot of medications for geriatric patients. Sounds like a very exciting and busy job. How did you get interested in this field? I've been working pharmacy for uh, pretty close to 30 years now, and I started out in the hospital uh, mixing IV therapies and total parental nutrition therapies for people who couldn't eat physically. Um, I became involved with compounding pharmacy a number of years ago uh, because of the need and the unavailability uh, of certain medications for a certain group of, uh, of individuals that I knew at the time. So I, I did my research, I investigated compounding pharmacy and ended up with Joe here at his pharmacy to do a specialized form of medicine that's unique. It's very awesome. I'm sure that hard work has paid off. What did you have to do in order to become this? Um, I have an associate degree in specialized technology, and I also have a background in chemistry at a four-year college. 
other than that, there, there's a specialized training center in Houston, Texas called Professional Compounding Centers of America that teach us the technology that's involved with physically making medications by scratch or from scratch. There are pharmacies that say that they compound where they take a tube of a commercially available cream and mix it with another commercially available cream uh, and call that a compound. But I actually make the creams here, okay, before they get compounded and or the medications are added from a bulk form, not something that's been previously manufactured. That's really awesome. And how is technology incorporated into your job with that? If they pan around the room when we're done with the interview here, there's, there's tons of equipment in this room that are very specialized. The ones that you can see behind us now are called electronic mortar and pestles. Um, if you investigate pharmacy, and that's something that you're gonna do down the road, um, there's actually a mortar and pestle in the hood over there, but a mortar and pestle is what you used to do to grind up pills and tablets now. Okay, te technologically, these will physically do them um, without me having to invest the time in crushing them. And, but scales, um, magnetic stirs and hot plates, ointment mills, um, very specialized equipment that makes my job a lot easier. And I'm sure as time evolves, the technology will increase as well. How does your position in the ef help, help with the efficiency of the business as a whole? We provide a specialized form of pharmacy that not many people do in, in today's day and age. Um, I think that there's approximately 27 to 2,800 compounding pharmacies in the United States. Um, locally here in Pittsburgh, we have quite a few, you know, but at the same time, um, you know, it's a very specialized uh, occupation and it provides Joe with another niche to the retail pharmacy in order to make his business more competitive. It's very unique what you do here. And with that, what is your favorite part of your job? Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I enjoy my job all day long because it's one of those jobs where you're not doing the same thing. There's no redundancy. There's changes in doses, changes in in, in the physical nature of the drug, whether it's a liquid or a cream or a, a capsule or a solid tablet. So redundancy is not something that happens on a daily basis here. Something's different and something's more exciting every day. Sounds like a very exciting field. Thanks so much for being here today with me, Scott. Back to the studio. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'm here today with Joe, the owner of The Medicine Shop. How are you today, Joe? Well, thank you. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you as well. Could you describe to me what The Medicine Shop is all about? Mm -hmm. We have two locations here in Oakmont and in Penn Hills. Um, it, they're family-owned and operated. I've run both of them, the one in Penn Hills, for 35 years. This one, like, 30 years. So it's been a long time. I'm very old. <laughs> um, but we do a lot of different things because we don't... Um, we, we don't, we're not just your typical pharmacy. We are very much engaged with the patients. We get to know them all on a first name basis. We're involved in the communities. We are um, a compounding lab, so we make up specialty compounds for veterinarians, for animals, obviously. Uh, we compound bioidentical hormones. We just do a lot of things. Difficult medications that are not available in certain forms, we put them into liquid forms or forms that even a child can use. So we're pretty unique. We have an entire lab, which I believe you interviewed Scott, and Scott told you about that. Um, what else do we do? We have a nurse practitioner. Actually, this is her office, so she's, she's in here normally four days a week. Um, we do consultations. I'm a naturopath as well as a clinical nutritionist. So we take a very different approach to health that it's more than just medication. It's also about encouraging folks to engage, take care of themselves, participate in their health, exercise, eat right, and um, maybe even detoxify. There's things that without getting very specific here, but uh, we do a lot of pretty strange things. We do a uh, national and local radio show 
that um, is on XM Sirius satellites. Matter of fact, I just got done doing it. It's local as well. We do we broadcast into Boston as well on Saturdays and in Pittsburgh. It's all about natural health, health approaches. We comment on recent studies, information that's out there, give it our spin, my spin, what traditional medicine would say and what I believe is kind of the integrated part of that. Um, we do live streams, teachings in here. We do a couple live streams a month where we teach about everything, the importance of just water, um, sleep problems, folks that have problems with sleep. So. I could go on for hours, but we don't have hours. So. Sounds like a, a little bit of a background. Sounds like a very interesting, and exciting business that has a lot to offer. So, once again, with that, what do you personally do on a daily basis when you start work here? Um, I am. Uh, I do a lot of the consults along with my nurse practitioner. So I'm involved in the consults. I'm not involved as much in the uh, directly in quote the filling of prescriptions. That's where my son comes in and my youngest one is also in pharmacy school we have technicians and uh, then we compound in the lab obviously so I'm not involved in that but I do a radio show then I prepare for the radio show usually about an hour before and, it, and bet before and after that I'm usually doing interacting with patients and consults how to get them to change their life and their lifestyles very busy day with a lot to Very do. <laughs> How do you handle customers with those different needs, as you mentioned before? Oh um, we try to meet them wherever they are. For example, uh, many m m don't have an interest in maybe an integrated approach. They just want to take their medications, and that's it. And that's fine. And so then we're going to be there to consult you and make sure they're using your medications right. What are some of the side effects? What you should know about that medication? What your options are longer term? Are there other medications that could work similarly but maybe have less side effects? So I still interact with patients on that level too. So wherever the patient is, that's kind of where we meet them. Someone comes in and says, I, I, I've had side effects on this medication before. Is there anything else I can do? Well, then we want to try to meet you there too. So we're, I, I, we're, we're kind of like the full enchilada you know we kind of we kind of offer the full range of of i think of health support here from a nurse practitioner to a naturopath to traditional pharmacy to a radio show to a live stream that you can go watch and learn about the uh fad diets what works doesn't work it's really awesome that you're able to help your customers try to find that balance and what is your favorite part of working here and owning it i, I think um well we have a lot of employees between the two offices uh, up in penn hills and here and we have about 26, 27 employees all told. So I think the most important thing to me is the relationships that I've developed with the people that work for me. And I try to be fair. Um, I don't want them to just see this just as work. They have problems. They know they can come to me. Um, so I, I think the relationship part of it. And then the other part is the radio show. I, I do enjoy that we get calls from all over the country. It's live call in. So we can get calls in a show from Missouri. Arizona, Alabama, Georgia, that's a typical day. And all of your hard work and de dedication has really paid off. What are your goals for the store this year? Wow. Um, specific goals, that's a tough question. Um, I think we want to expand a little bit more the communities that we're in, Oakmont and Penn Hills. We want to get more visibility in those communities because we're not just this large big box pharmacy we want to get a little bit more into the communities and let the people locally know a little bit more of what we do that's really our goal well it sounds like this store has a very exciting future thanks for being here today with me joe it's been a pleasure, back to the studio
Hi, I'm Kathleen Crossy here at the Dog Stop with Sarah. How are you today, Sarah? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. So how long have you been working here and why did you want to work here? I've been working here since we opened in October of 2014. I originally wanted to work here because I went to school to be a vet assistant and I thought this would be a great stepping off point, but I loved it so much that I just stuck with it. Seems like an awesome job. So what do you do on a daily work day? I'm the assistant manager, so my work day is a little bit different than some of the girls in the back. Um, I make sure that everything runs smoothly, um, including daycare, boarding, grooming, and we do training as well. Seems fun. So what's your favorite part about working here? Definitely the best part of my day is getting to play with all the dogs that come in. That'd be my favorite part too. So lastly, approximately how many dogs are here and how do you provide for all of them? So today we have about 25 in daycare um, and about five boarders. Usually we have around between 35 and 40 boarders every day and about 40 daycare. Um, we do have adamant staff back there that are fully trained to handle dogs in any situation and we, we make sure that they stay happy, safe, and play all day. Well, thank you for letting us interview. I'm Kathleen Crossy here at the Dog Stop. Hi, I'm Patrick Cross from Plum High School, and I'm here with Rose Manganero and Marge Huffman. Uh, how are you guys doing today? Very great. All right, good. Um, so, what brings you guys to Plum Nanas today? We are members of the Bridge Club that's playing here, and we play in restaurants every week, different restaurants. Oh, it sounds like fun. What other um, establishments do you guys play at? I should have, I mean, I don't know what she had to keep after. And I take the best every time. 
It's definitely getting cool. Um, so I'm going to ask you a couple questions about Cuglianos. Um What is your favorite food here? Pizza. Pizza. Everyone does like pizza. How about you? That's good. Would you say Pugliana is one of your favorite restaurants in the area? Or is there another particular favorite of yours? Yeah, it is one of our favorites. We come here at least once a month. It's not worth this. two times this month. That's good. Same for you? Exactly. Exactly the same. Service is good. Okay. It's convenient. So I'm guessing you both are from Plum or Penn Hills around the area? Yeah. Yeah. Alright, well, I'm Patrick Cross from Plum High School. Hi, Carlos Henderson here with Mariah Thomas here at Pugliana's. Mariah, how long have you been working here at Pugliana's? Three years. A long time. Yeah. What hours and days are you open here? We are open from 11 till 2 in the bar, um, seven days a week. Kitchen's open until 11 then, sorry. What kind of food do you serve here? Uh, it's an Italian restaurant, but we serve everything from hoagies to crab cakes, prime rib, all the above. Wide variety. What is one of the most popular dishes here and why? Um, a lot of people come for the prime rib on the weekends. Our crab cakes are homemade. They're phenomenal. Pizza's great, too, though, so you can't go wrong. Sounds delicious. When do you think is the busiest part of the day here? Probably our dinner rush, like 6 to 8. It gets real crazy in the kitchen. <laughs> what is the most strenuous part of working here? About those dinner hours, just the chaos, making sure everyone works together smoothly. Got to get it together. I bet it's very busy here then. Do you host any other events here at Pugliana's? We have a whole entire banquet room in the back. We do things like Make-A-Wish, Spirit of Christmas, a whole bunch of events back there. Lastly, what is the most enjoyable part about working here? Um, I would have to say everyone that works. We're like a big giant family. so the. Ambiance is great, everyone who works here is great, we all work together great, so it's an enjoyable place to be. I bet. Thank you for being here with me today, Mariah. Hi, I'm Logan Carney here at Soma's Pizza in Oakmont. I'm here with Sue Soma. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. 
Now, Sue, the first question is, um, how did you and your family get into the pizza business? Well, my husband, Mark, opened one in 1977, and <clears throat> I married into it. So, What's it like having a family-run business? Um, family-run businesses are, are nice. You can always count on your family to work. Uh, you do put in a lot of hours, and we do live close, so it, it's, it's convenient that way. What makes your pizza so delicious? Well, Mark came, came up with the recipe back in 1977, but there's a few little things in there that we don't tell anybody about, and that's what makes it so good. Any menu items you recommend, and why do you recommend it? Well, we're not just a pizza shop. We have salads, we have burgers, we have wings, and I think, you know, everybody needs to try a little bit of everything. It's called Soma Pizza, but it's also called Soma Pizza Restaurant, and the burgers are fabulous, the salads are very good, the appetizers are good, so I think everybody should try a little bit of everything. Um, how are you guys going to prepare for the upcoming U.S. Open? Well, in 2007, we rented the business out to um, 84 Lumber, and we were at the beach. So if we get a chance to, to rent it out this year to another business, we certainly will. If not, it's a win-win situation because there will be thousands of people, and it's right across the street, and all the volunteers are parking right across the street, so we should be very busy either way. Where do you see the business in 10 years and why? Well, hopefully it's still growing like it has been for the last 13 years. We've been here 13 years, and this is our bread and butter as a family, so in 10 years, you know, maybe my kids will take it over, or maybe you will. Mm. Mm. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> You're currently helping out Toys for Tots. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we have a family that comes here all the time, and there was a wonderful woman who unfortunately passed from cancer, and that would be your mother. And we wanted to honor her in some way. And she loved children, and she loved giving to children. And this was her favorite time of the year. So your dad and I talked about it, and that's what we decided to do, to give back to the children that don't have anything. So it's become a tradition. And I hope I do it for the next 20 years. Beats the 10. <laughs> Any interesting stories that happened in the store? Well, the restaurant, my apologies. There's been a lot of interesting things, but I really can't talk about them amongst the youth or for a TV show. Um, we meet a lot of uh, different people, meet a lot of nice people, meet, meet a lot of weird people, but that's what makes the world go round by all different kinds of people. Your son, Vinny, is a business owner himself. Can you tell us a little about his? Yes, Vincent uh, has a dog business. It's called Say It Once Dog Training, and he's the new... Caesar Milan of Plum Borough of Pennsylvania, to tell you the truth. So he's working very hard. He also is coaching the varsity team, the hockey team, and he's doing real well. Um, your family is big into hockey. Can you tell us a little bit about your connection to the sport? Well, both my kids started playing when they were four years old. My oldest son left town at the house at 17 years old, never just just moved home. He played in Europe for four years, uh, got a scholarship to Ohio State, so he has a Division One. Education and Vinny also was playing and was playing in Chicago and got a couple of really bad concussions and kind of curtailed his playing, but that's why he's coaching now, so it works out real well. Now, what's for last question? What's your favorite pizza topping? Anchovies. That's a very good one, very good choice. Thanks again. I'm Logan Carney here with Sue Soma. Back to you.